How's it going, guys? Meeting just a question. Bad chemistry electrolytes, steps one and two, six year old woman constipation, weakness, other G past four days. Three weeks ago, diagnosed with an operable lobular carcinoma of the breast laboratory studies. So low hemoglobin and 11 grams per deciliter should be 13 to 17.5. Non menstruating women and men, 12 to 17.5. Menstruating women. We can infer it's probably low secondary anemia of chronic disease. Patient has breast cancer. Obviously, you want to think about things like IDA, GI blood loss, colon cancer, and elderly patients as well who have low hemoglobin. Leukocytes normal 8,000 should be 4 to 11,000. Sodium normal 141 should be 135 to 145. Potassium normal 3.9 should be 3.5 to 5. Calcium elevated 15.1 should be 8.4 to 10.2. Phosphorus 3.5 normal should be 3 to 4.5. Albumin normal 4.5 should be 3.5 to 5.5. Short QT interval on ECG, which just means hypercalcemia. 0.9% normal saline administered, which is the following most important pharmacologic therapy choice A, cryoprecipitate, wrong fucking answer. Haven't seen this as a correct answer on NBME exam. Apparently, this is notably given to patients who have low fibrinogen levels. Okay, so patients who have DIC, where their fibrinogen levels come back very, very low, that's when crowd precipitate can be theoretically given. Choice A, wrong fucking answer. Choice B, democlocycin, one wrong fucking answer. So te technically tetracycline antibiotic, but it causes nephrogenic DI. I have seen this as a correct answer on one of the two CK NBMEs for treatment in a patient who has SIDH. Okay, so technically you got one problem, let's just cancel it out by causing another problem. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, FFP, wrong fucking answer. So can also be given to patients who have DIC, okay, crowd precipitate and FFP. FFP is the more generic treatment for DIC, but once again, if it's determined that the patient has DIC, notably has very, very low fibrinogen levels, then we go to crab precipitate, but FFP, just a general treatment for DIC. Also patients who need rapid reversal uh, who are on warfarin. Okay, so vitamin K deficiency, uh, obviously you can supply the vitamin K, but it takes a while to work. But those who have bleeding, those who need to go into surgery, you can give FFP. In this case, wrong fucking answer. Show is dihydroxyurea, wrong fucking answer. So. I'd say the highest yield point for eosomilane is that you know that this could be given to patients who have sickle cell to increase production of HBF. That's literally the highest yield point for eosomilane. Okay, technically it inhibits ribonucleotide reductase, lower yield. Okay, technically you could give it to patients uh, to decrease recurrences of polycythemia vera, but that will actually uh, cause you to venture into wrong answer territory because. PCV on Yosemite, they want phlebotomy as the answer to decrease symptoms. I've seen phlebotomy, but technically, if you were to look up hydroxyurea, when could you use it? You could use it in patients who apply semivera, but once again, it's to increase fetal hemoglobin, HBF, in patients who have sickle cell. And for apply semivera, choose phlebotomy as the answer. Choice D, wrong fucking answer. Choice C, potassium, wrong fucking answer. Now, I did this on purpose, be a flagrant asshole, because this patient has hypercalcemia, and some students kind of reverse our treatments here. In other words, patients who have normal calcium but who have hyperkalemia, patients who have high potassium levels, if they have ECG changes, we give IV calcium gluconate or calcium chloride. Okay, so high potassium, if the patient had it, we would give the patient calcium first to stabilize the myocardium, but it's not the reverse. So there's probably 8% of you who fucked that up. You're like, oh, I reversed it. Wrong fucking answer. Choice F, pomidronate, bisphosphonate, correct answer. So patient has hypercalcemia. And what the US simile wants you to know is the way we treat hypercalcemia is normal saline first. Okay, so they'll do this. They'll have normal saline as an answer, pomidronate as another answer, and the answer is saline first if it hasn't been given already. Here we gave the saline, OMG, so now we're going to give pomidronate as the next answer. And notice I didn't list calcitonin here because we don't want to conflate, okay? We don't want to have two potential correct answers. There is one question I've seen on a 2CK form where they have both listed calcitonin and pomidronate, and the answer is pomidronate. Okay, so apparently calcitonin can be given for patients who need rapid correction of hypercalcemia, but pomidronate, the bisphosphonate, tends to be the one that's given first regardless. For NBME, it's what they want. 
okay? So what you need to know, hypercalcemia, saline first, then the bisphosphonate, pomidronate's the one we tend to give. Alendronate can be given to patients who, let's say, have multiple myeloma. You want to decrease the lytic lesions. Uh, patients who want to help preserve their uh, their bone density if they're on corticosteroids. Patients who have osteoporosis after weight-bearing exercise, calcium, vitamin D, you give them alendronate. Pomidronate tends to be the one who... Uh, patients who have hypercalcemia due to malignancy, okay, hyperparathyroidism. But until the NBME, not, not QBank bullshit, okay, I'm talking about actual NBME, until they have a question comes out where calcitonin is correct over pomidronate, I haven't seen it, okay? So as of November 2024, fluids first, normal saline, pomidronate, then calcitonin. Pomidronate, correct answer. You know the deal. I'm going to make more content on my subscription. Appreciate your time. That's it.